Good morning. We are so grateful that you have found your way into this place to worship with us, those of you who are in person, those of you who are joining us online. This is a true community of faith where the love and acceptance and service of Christ Jesus is evident in the ministry and in the world. So we welcome you to this space. We also want to welcome you. Uh, if you're a visitor for the first time, a guest, it means so much to us that you have chosen this space to be a part of today in this community of faith. So thank you for coming and joining us. We hope that you'll come again. We hope you'll come again, especially on a more regular Sunday when not everybody's gone. Uh, but we, we are grateful for those who have come because together we are in the house of the Lord making joyful noise and worship and celebration. If you'll take the QR code found in your bulletin and take a picture of it on your phone and fill out our connection card, or if you're watching online at Facebook, it is at the top of the column to see more. Push that and you'll find a link to the connection card. We encourage everyone to fill that out, to share your questions, your comments, tell us how we're doing, but also to share your prayer request so that we may be in prayer for you this week as we go about living the life that God has called us to. If you're in person this morning, we remind you to make sure you get a validation for your parking sticker if you have parked at the AT&T lot. The ushers have these and they'll be glad to give you one so that you do not have to pay for parking. We encourage everyone to take note that in this month of July, we sponsor our Midtown Assistance Center. It is a time where we remember those who are working but are in need at this moment for rest or utility support, food support, transportation support, or clothing support in these months. We try to reach out and help them through our gift to MAC, which is our Mid Midtown Alliance Center. You may leave your second mile gift this morning in the baskets that you find toward the break in the chancel before the altar during communion. We would appreciate that. Or you can also give on secure give or text to give. Just make sure we know it's for communion offering. The outreach and missions team is accepting donations this month of white, large and extra large white socks for those who come to our Tuesday evening supper club and Saturday breakfast clubs. The bin is in the narthex. We'll have some around the church for your convenience. We hope that you will take the moment, uh, bring your gifts throughout this month, uh, during church office hours or on Sunday morning, and we will be able to minister to those whom we love and are honored to serve. As we come to this time of worship, I invite you to open your hearts and to long for the very love of God to fill you up as we celebrate together, as we worship our loving and living Lord.
And now I invite you to stand either in body or spirit as we say together our prayer of praise and adoration, saying together, Blessed are you, creator of all, to be praise and glory forever. As your dawn renews the face of the earth, bringing light and life to all creation, may we rejoice in this day you have made. As we wake refreshed from the depths of sleep, open our eyes to behold your presence and strengthen our hands to do your will, that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Creator, Redeemer, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Now let us lift our voices together in song. I invite you to join with me in the recitation of our affirmation of faith printed in your worship folder, saying together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. our Old Testament lesson today comes from the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 5, verses 1 through 5 and 9 and 10. Then all the tribes of Israel came to David at Hebron and said, Look, we are your bone and flesh. For some time, while Saul was king over us, it was you who led out Israel and brought it in. The Lord said to you, It is you who shall be shepherd of my people Israel, you who shall be ruler over Israel. 
So all the elders of Israel came to the king at Hebron, and King David made a covenant with them at Hebron before the Lord, and they anointed David king over Israel. David was 30 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 40 years. At Hebron, he reigned over Judah seven years and six months, and at Jerusalem, he reigned over all Israel and Judah 33 years. David occupied the stronghold and, the, and named it the city of David. David built the city all around from the Milo inward. And David became greater and greater for the Lord, the God of hosts, was with him. Friends, this is the word of God for us and through us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. For our younger church. And if there are any young people in the audience, I invite you to come down and join me. And if not, those of you who are watching online, I invite you to get closer in to the screen because VW and I are glad that you are with us today. When I um, read the scripture for today's gospel lesson, I wondered how many of us believe that Jesus actually did miracles. Not just in biblical days, but how many Christians believe that miracles still happen today? So B.W. asked me, well, what is a miracle? And I think that miracles are wonderful, exciting things that happen and we, we can't explain how they happen. So B.W. said, oh yeah, like, like magic? Oh no, 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 not like magic. Magic is something that we can do. Miracles are things that only God can do. God gets the credit, God gets the glory, not us. And I think that today's um, gospel lesson, the, the miracles that Jesus performed in, in, in Mark's gospel, God, Jesus was able to do it because Jesus used the power of love. Love is awesome. Love is like, it's just, it's just wonderful. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is, it's not rude. It's not irritable. It's not jealous. Love stands for truth. And love wants good for everybody, not just for some. I think that if we could just love like Jesus, maybe we could look at people and look at situations in a different light. If we could love like Jesus loved, maybe we could help make things better instead of just maybe complaining about it. And if we could learn to love like Jesus, I know that this would be a better world. Would you pray with me? Oh God, you are love. Thank you for sending Jesus to this world to show us the power of love. Thank you, God, for how you are always with us. And I ask, oh God, that you... A reading from the Gospel of Mark, the fifth chapter, verses 21 through 43. If you have your Bibles, I encourage you to turn there. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was by the sea. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue, named Jairus, came, and when he saw him, fell at his feet, and he begged him repeatedly, My little daughter is at the point of death, Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. So Jesus went with him. And a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who'd been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years. She'd endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had, and she was no better, but rather she grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, if I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. 
Immediately, her hemorrhage stopped, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately, aware that the power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you? How can you say, Who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he entered, he said to them, Why do you make a commotion and weep? The child's not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talithiokom, which means little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was 12 years of age. At this, they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I invite you to pray with me. Loving God, may the words of my mouth, the thoughts and the meditations of each of our hearts here in this place and those watching online be found pleasing and acceptable in your sight, Lord, our rock and our redeemer. We pray this in the loving name of Christ. Amen. 245 years ago, the power of our forefathers and foremothers led to the birth of a new nation. One nation that was committed to the words of one of the founders, Thomas Jefferson. He wrote, We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Since that time, the most powerful nation in the world has worked to try and make that statement truth. All people, all people now, not just men, but all are created equal. It has therefore not always been a successful journey. Power to force equality for our black siblings, power to force equality for all women, power to enforce equality for the LGBTQ community, have seen some slight successes, but not life-changing successes, not life-changing equality for all. And so the power struggle, even today, 245 years later, continues. Don't get me wrong, I am grateful for the freedoms we have as a nation, but I believe we have been using the wrong kind of power to bring about that equality, to bring about life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness for every created child of God. Go with me now from 1776 to 1985 when one of the greatest movies of all time came out, Back to the Future. Great movie, awesome movie. I've watched it, I own the VHSs, I've owned the C CDs. We get it on Netflix. We watch this movie, all the sequels. A little known singer was charged to come up with a song that would give a punch to this great movie. And an unknown guy by the name of Huey Lewis and his musicians called Huey Lewis and the News 
produced a song entitled The Power of Love. It gave the band their first number one hit on the U.S. Billboard's Hot 100, their second number one hit on the U.S. top ranked tracks chart, and was a top ten hit in the U.K. singles chart, where it appeared on the U.K. edition of the band's fourth studio album, Four. The song also was nominated for an Academy Award for the best original song in 1986 at the 58 Academy Awards. The song is what it says. It's a song about love. And the lyrics of the song are very, very strong. Here's the best part of the song, lyrically speaking. And it don't take money, don't take fame, no need no credit card to ride this train. It's strong and it's sudden, it can be cruel sometimes, but it might just save your life. That's the power of love. Do you know what they're trying to say in this song? The lyrics are saying you don't have to be rich, you don't have to be famous, you don't need credit, you don't need any kind of leisure. Nothing matters, only love. And the power from love can make you crazy, can make you like a fool, and you can be happy with that for the rest of your life. Amazingly, it took a great song and a great movie to get the same message that Jesus Christ tried to get across some 2,000 years earlier. It was the power of love that drove a rich and powerful ruler of the synagogue to fall at the feet of Jesus to plead for his dying daughter. It was the power of love that got Jesus worn and tired out and broken up from his vacation time and moving toward Jairus' house. It was the power of love and the faith that gave a woman courage to touch the hem of Jesus' clothes. It was the power of love that allowed Jesus to look into her eyes and to say, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace, healed of your disease. It was the power of love that when friends came from the house and told him that his daughter had died, don't bother the teacher any longer, that Jesus turned to Jairus and said, don't be afraid. Just keep trusting. It was the power of love that spoke to a dead child, saying, Talith, come, or young woman, get up, that brought life to the dead. It was the power of love that brought life, liberty, and true happiness to all these people on that long ago hot summer day in the Holy Lands. There is not wealth status, color, gender, ethnicity, ever, anything mentioned or needed. The only thing was the power of love. In this gospel, we have the story of Jesus' miracles. The miracles of the gospel of Mark come immediately. But they are miracles that occur because first of the power of love. The love of Jesus Christ for all the children of God. This was always the first and foremost driving force of Jesus' ministry, his love for the children of God. You hear it in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. You, you can sense it, you feel it as he drove out the evil money changers and those who were defacing the holy temple by saying, my father's house will not be made into a den of thieves. You can hear it explained over and over and over and over again as Jesus constantly kept explaining to the disciples. You see it on a cross at Calvary. The power of love for every created person. The power of love for humanity is what makes us all free. Free, and it is the power of love that is for all humanity. We've been told somewhere that it is truth that will set us free. And the truth is, my friends, this morning that Jesus loves you. And that love is all powerful. And there is powerful love there to change the world, to change you and me, to free us from being enslaved to this current moment. 
The song says the power of love is a curious thing. Makes one weep, makes another sing. Change a hawk to a little white dove. More than a feeling, that's the power of love. Tougher than diamonds, rich like cream. Stronger and harder than a girl's bad dream. Make a bad one good, make a wrong one right. Power of love will keep you home at night. The power of love, true love, has amazing, miraculous abilities. Political power does not. Financial power does not. Intellectual power does not. Physical power does not. Even a powerful reputation with a good name does not. Only the power of love can, can cure, and only the power of love can and will change the world. And this love is free, free for the taking, the receiving, and the putting into our hearts for all who would embrace the faith and love found in Jesus Christ. It's free, but all the other powers cost, great cost, but not Jesus' power of love. Don't need money, don't need fame, don't need no credit card to ride this train. It's strong and it's sudden, it's cruel sometimes, but it might just save your life. That's the power of love. That's the power of his love. Yes, there's nothing stronger than that love. Yes, it's nothing more sudden and surprising to us than that love. Undeserved, but it is there for us. And yes, it can be cruel sometimes because we live in other powers and we think they get us what we need, but it is the power of love that will free us and at times it may have to move us to that moment. I want you to feel this morning the power of that love, like Jairus, like an unnamed woman in Scripture, like a daughter who now is sitting on the table side eating a lamb sandwich. Feel the power of love as all the people who are created equal in this world, for all are equal in the eyes and the heart of God the Creator. All are sacred, all are holy, all are worthy. Feel the power of love slowly breaking down the walls of hate and of evil. Feel the power of love in the piece of bread and a cup of juice. Succumb, my friends. Willingly succumb to the power of this love. And when you do, you will have life. You will know liberty. You'll know true happiness. Who cares if we look like fools? After all, that's what the gospel tells us is going to happen anyway. Let this love hold you and give you the power to live and to love others. More than happiness, the power of this love will bring you a life of completeness. A love that will never let you go. A love that will set us on the road to life, liberty, and true happiness. The power of love. The power of Jesus' love gives us the power to heal broken lives and even to bring life to places where there is death. The power of love is the same love that Jesus desires to pour into your life and to my life. We just need to be willing and wanting and ready to receive such faithful and unbeknown love. Just like that woman who had faith and touched the garment watched her world change. The world will change when we believe in the power of love, starting with you, starting with me. It's amazing, with the power of love, we can go back to our present moment and have strength to move to the future, unafraid, being loved by the power of God. In the name of the Creator, and the Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Loving God, we are yours. We come as we are with our cares and our concerns, longing for the equality of humanity in our land. 
We long to touch you and find healing, hope, and power in your embrace. Strengthen our faith and heal our brokenness, that we may worship you with joy and serve all our neighbors, especially the neighbors who are on our hearts today, Jay and Trevor, Jerry and Eric, John and Jane, and all, Almighty God, who need your healing touch, especially in our family, but also around the world, who need to be made whole, who need to experience the love of God. May we truly love these and all our siblings whom we are blessed to join at the table of the Lord with on this day. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. We are using musical setting number 17 in your hymnal for our time of the great thanksgiving. We will be using a great thanksgiving that is acceptable for this specific day in the life of our nation and of our church. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Almighty God, creator of the universe, ruler of all nations, judge of all flesh, you have placed us, your people, in this land made rich with rivers, forests, mountains, and creatures great and small. Here you set before us the, the founders and pioneers of this nation an opportunity beyond measure to build a realm of justice, peace, and freedom. Here you continue to call your people freed from the law and baptized into Christ Jesus to be a sign of your reign in all the world. For such a place, such a vision, and such a calling, we give you thanks, praying we may ever join afresh the dream you set before us. And so with your people in every land on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Above all, we give thanks for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, who sends us into the world to declare the good news of your kingdom to every creature, justice to all people, good news to the poor, release for the prisoners, sight for the blind, and freedom for the oppressed. On the night before he was arrested and sentenced in death by the authorities of his own nation, Jesus took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. When supper was over, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. And so we remember again as we proclaim the mystery of our faith. ourselves out before you in praise and thanksgiving, a holy and a living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us. Pour out your spirit on us in this place and those gathered with us wherever they might be, and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make Christ known to us in the breaking of this bread and in the sharing of this cup. Renew our fellowship in him 
that we may be for the world Christ's body, poured out for the world at this time, in this nation, and at this great banquet in the fullness of your new creation, where justice flows like rivers, righteousness like an ever-flowing stream, where none shall hunger or thirst, neither shall they learn war anymore. By him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, almighty God, now and ever. Children of God, we are bold to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This is God's table. God's table of love. And at this table, all are loved and all are welcome. Whether you are a United Methodist or belong to a denomination or a seeker or don't know what you're thinking or believing at the moment, this table is for you because God has opened God's heart by the power of love for you to come and to feast. Our ushers will guide you to feast this morning. We will be giving you a wafer and a cup of juice. We invite you to take the wafer, follow it with the juice, and then dispose of your cups in the waste bins on either side of the aisle here to keep our strict cleanliness and to keep us safe from germs at this moment. If you're at home, we invite you to pick up your elements and to join us there as well and to break the bread, to lift the cup, and to feast on the love of Almighty God. The body of Christ, broken, that you may be made whole. The cup of salvation, poured out for you for the forgiveness of all sin. The ushers will direct you. The choir will come first.
Friends, now that we have partaken here together, present and at a distance, let us pray together. Holy God, we thank you for this gift in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that by the same grace we may go out into the world to be the love of Jesus Christ for others. It is in Christ's holy name that we pray. Amen. One of the most important things we do is to continue opening during the week to stay in ministry, to help those in need, to serve those who are hungering and thirsting. And so thank you for allowing us to air condition this space during the week, and especially today while you're here. It has been a hot and a humid summer so far, but it is by your generosity that we pay our utility bills on time and to the full. We are thankful for your kindness and your giving in this time of worship. The Apostle Paul challenged the church at Corinth to recognize their abundance, that they might share with those who have need. God calls us to give out of our bounty, that we all might have enough to live without fear. With eager hearts, let us joyfully give out of our abundance, knowing that our giving is a powerful experience of our love for God and for God's church. You're invited online or here to give by secure give, text to give, or by placing an offering in the plate or mailing a check to the church office. Whatever works for you will work for the kingdom of God. So we invite you to honor God in your generous hearts in this moment of worship.
God's love is steadfast. God's powerful love is great. God is the power of love. God heals our brokenness and gives us love to share with a broken world in great need of such love. Let the power of love flow from you to our world. In the name of the Creator and the Redeemer and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'll catch you. <laughs> <laughs>